Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and in this video, we talk to you about the display on the OnePlus 9 and the OnePlus 9 Pro. The two displays are claimed to be one of the best in the smartphone industry today. OnePlus has made a lot of tall claims and we've actually tried to verify as many of them as possible. So where do the two displays stand? Well, in order to find out, make sure to first hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any future updates from us. Now with that out of the way, let's begin. Before we get into the data about the two displays, let's just go over the basic specs of these two panels. They're both AMOLED displays with the 9 Pro also featuring an LTPO uh, assembly on the inside. As far as the color reproduction and the brightness features go, both the panels are certified to go all the way up to 1100 nits, support HDR10+, and also are 10-bit panels by nature. All of this should mean that they should have excellent color reproduction, they should be super bright, they should also be able to go dim, as dim as you need them to be in a dark environment, all of that. So, here is what we found. After putting the OnePlus 9 and the OnePlus 9 Pro through a series of display tests using Calman Ultimate, we've concluded that the two displays, well, meet most of the claims that OnePlus has made. First, let's start with the color profiles available. So under the display settings, there's an advanced calibration setting where you'll find vivid and natural as the two sort of like automatic settings. There's also an advanced button which gives you access to DCI-P3, sRGB and white gamut AMOLED color spaces. These are the three we're gonna talk about because the first two are practically running everything in auto mode and they will switch colors and their uh, white balance as and when needed. So in terms of color accuracy, those two are totally out the window. First, let's go over the sRGB color space. While testing for color accuracy and gamut coverage, both the displays cover 100% of the sRGB color space when set to the sRGB profile. The Delta E, however, and hold on to your pants guys, is 0.8. Average Delta E for both the displays is 0.8 for the OnePlus 9 Pro, 0.9 for the OnePlus 9. That's better Delta E than a lot of professional calibrated monitors out there. And that legit holds up. The maximum Delta E uh, noticed for both the displays was a Delta E of 2.2 for the OnePlus 9 and a Delta E, of course, again, 2.2 for both OnePlus 9 and the OnePlus 9 Pro. So that means sRGB, which also therefore means when you look at the kind of color uh, gamut you get, according to our tests, well, while the sRGB gamut is 100%, the DCI-P3 color gamut gets significantly reduced with the user getting access to only 66% of the DCI-P3 color space. That's significantly reduced, right? So when you fire up Netflix and you want to watch your favorite episode of Altered Carbon in HDR, this color space is not going to cut it. So that's where you switch it over to the DCI-P3 color space, where once again, the color uh, reproduction is insanely accurate. You get an average Delta E of just two and a maximum Delta E of 2.8, which is incredibly impressive by any measure. At the same time, the color gamut covered by the DCI-P3 color profile is 96.75%. Very, very close to 100%. Definitely enough to display all your HDR content in all its glory. No problems there. If you switch over to the AMOLED wide, however, you do get a significantly higher Delta E error going all the way up to about 5.8, um, which is noticeable for sure. And then the colors start turning more towards the bluer side, but your gamut coverage jumps significantly into 122% of the DCI-P3 color space. Very impressive by any measure. And that, by the way, applies to both the phones, not just one of them. So great, the OnePlus 9 Pro and the OnePlus 9 are super color accurate when it comes to the display, have crazy gamut coverage, 100% sRGB, over 100% for the DCI-P3 color space. But where do they stand with respect to the competition? Now, we all know that some of the, the best displays in the market are on Samsung flagships and the iPhone. So what did we do? We got ourselves an S21 Ultra, iPhone 12 Pro Max, 
ran these two as well through the Kalman uh, suite of tests and came out with their average delta E numbers, gamut numbers, etc. So I'm just going to read them out to you. But bottom line is that even the S21 Ultra when set to its natural color profile, which is supposed to conform to the sRGB color space, has an average delta E of 2 and a maximum delta E of 3.5. Let me put that in context. The OnePlus 9 Pro has an average delta E of 0.8 and a maximum delta E of 2.2. So the 9 Pro's display is more color accurate than that of the S21 Ultra. With the iPhone, we got a average delta E of 4, which is above the threshold of 3 and a maximum delta E of 5.9. Definitely putting it not in the ideal range when it comes to the sRGB color space. Um, the gamut coverage on all of these phones, of course, was in line with what it should be, which is 100% sRGB and over 100% for the DCI-P3 color space. Uh, peak brightness as well on the S21 Ultra claimed to hit 1300 nits when you're playing HDR content and in testing about 750 nits from what we've recorded. On the OnePlus 9 Pro, the maximum brightness that we've recorded is 740 nits and on the OnePlus 9, roughly 721. So these brightness levels, by the way, guys, are not a, a peak brightness because when OnePlus or Samsung or Apple says 1100, 1300, 15, 18, whatever 100 nits, right? They're referring to a small window on the display when triggered in HDR mode. So HDR content typically can be mastered with brightness levels going all the way up to 4000 nits. So if an area of that kind of brightness was to show up on the display, as long as it's under 1000 nits, these displays should all be able to manage to display that without any problems. 1100 nits does not mean that the whole panel lights up to that much. You will go blind looking at it for sure. So let's conclude the display review for the OnePlus 9 and the OnePlus 9 Pro. If you're a content creator, if you care about color accuracy with these two phones, that worry is completely put to rest. Set the phone to the sRGB color profile and you're good to go. If you like consuming content, if you're basically somebody who's living off of Netflix and Amazon Prime and YouTube, and you need to watch videos in their all colorful glory, just switch it over to the DCI-P3 or wide AMOLED uh, color gamut. I do not recommend leaving it in the two automatic profiles that are available because you'll always have them switching things around either the white balance will switch or you'll have colors not being represented properly so it's just better to have it set to one of these profiles which locks the color space locks the white balance and locks the peak brightness in place for the kind of content or for the kind of work you're going to be doing on it so does the oneplus 9 pro and the oneplus 9 meet the expectations that would come with the title of one of the best smartphone displays absolutely and it's not just with respect to the color spaces either. You also get 120 Hz refresh rate on both the displays. The 9 Pro is a QHD plus uh, resolution panel, whereas the 9 is just 1080p, sufficiently enough for most people. At the same time, you also get a really fast touch polling rate. So if you're a gamer, you're gonna, res you're gonna really like the, uh, you know, the quick response to the touch that you put on these phones. And speaking of gaming, our actual full in-depth review of both the OnePlus 9 Pro and the OnePlus 9 are going to be out in the next few days. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the bell icon so that you don't miss that uh, video coming out soon. Also make sure you're stay tu staying tuned to our website because that's where the text review is going to go up. So thank you guys for watching this video. As for me, I'm hopefully going to see you another one. Maybe not, maybe I will. You never know what tomorrow brings. Thank you guys for watching.